Hello and welcome to News Click. I am Aditi. As a lot of you might have heard, the recent uh, Kashmir governor's statement where he practically appealed to the militants, saying that do not kill the innocent civilians and kill corrupt politicians and bureaucrats instead. To talk about this and the Kashmir issue in general, today we have with us civil rights activist Gautam Navlakha. So Gautam, with statements like these coming from the governor recently in the past, Amit Shah made a lot of statements during his parliament speech. Do you think this is a trend in Kashmir? Are we setting a trend that anything goes? Well, that's been true for quite a long time. But I think this governor takes the cake because he's come out and open quite, he's been quite uh, forthright in uh, sharing his <coughs> uh, considered opinion about hmm. many of the issues. So when he is after, uh, he claims that he was angered I mean, why was he so angry that he uh, virtually uh, made an appeal to the to the militants to to uh, target bureaucrats and politicians uh, and not the SPOs and the PSOs? Uh, <coughs> I don't know. I can't read his mind, but it's hmm. it's pretty. It's it it's another sign of the strange going ons in Jammu and Kashmir. It's always been. I mean, the whole history mm. of, of president's rule or governor's rule in Kashmir has been fraught with such incidents earlier too. Mm. But never uh, have we come across a governor making issue, I mean, <coughs> making statements which have gone beyond. Yes. Uh, mayor uh, giving expression to his personal opinion or yeah. perspective. Uh, he's gone overboard by coming out completely, mm, I mean coming mm. out with an appeal, virtually it's an, virtually an appeal to the militants. And so he seems to be, mm. uh, I guess Kashmir and the kind of impunity and unaccountability that exists mm. at all levels of government of India where Kashmir is concerned, where everything goes, I guess it fits in with that pattern that we see today. So if we talk about this sort of pattern and trend that the rhetoric in Kashmir from the Indian administration has taken. Uh, maybe we can look at Amit Shah's uh, parliamentary speech where he's talked about a lot of things, whether it's Article 370, 35A. Do you think that's this general sense of hypocrisy in the tone and the way things have been presented, which you yourself in a recent article have called the half truth? Well, hypocrisy or not, what he has said is. Uh, is partial, uh, doesn't cover all the issues. I mean, he suppressed facts. Hmm. Uh, he is unwilling to, and he's very coy about uh, even speaking about the role of Jansang, uh, the previous avatar of Bharti Janta Party, in uh, and Praja Parishad yes. in Jammu. Uh, so it's 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 uh, uh, you know this is something uh, again is fits in with the pattern but i think more than half truth it's it's an indicative of an ideological and dogmatic uh sticking to a position hmm. on jammu and kashmir on which rss had a long standing hmm. uh, view so it's now we see that they are actually trying to now push through hmm. their agenda in jammu and kashmir hmm. and that agenda is the agenda of full merger quote unquote full merger, which means <laughs> complete assimilation of Kashmir, Kashmir's obliteration of its own cultural identity mm. and its own specificity. I mean, that is the threat that uh, fears. So it's, it's a, it, this, this half-truth, hypocrisy, and this ideological, ideologically driven policy that we mm. see now unfolding in Jammu and Kashmir uh, make for a very combustible mix, uh, mm. you know, and it's it, it it can rebound on on uh, not just government of India, but the Indian people may have to end up paying a very high price That's for nice. it because there are systematically things that have been done in the la in the in the in recent times, which have gone beyond yeah. uh, what was ever done by the central government. This is not to exonerate. Uh, the previous governments for the role they have played in Jammu and Kashmir uh, and for 
evading responsibility hmm. which fell on their shoulders to at least try and work towards finding a democratic resolution of the of the issue hmm. but it goes beyond much beyond that now so talking about the governments and the previous government's role in kashmir what do you have to say to india championing the cause of baluchistan and uh, sort of speaking in support or defending the baluchistan Re liberation army in pakistan after the us having called it a global threat or a global terrorist well this seems to be a peculiar uh, feature of indian government isn't it mm. that uh, we are quite uh, the media the government and media is very obedient uh, obediently follows what the government says the government comes out with this obnoxious i mean a very strange uh, statement on the floor of uh, of the parliament through its ministry of external, external affairs, affairs. Mm. Uh, where they talk about uh, and they lament the fact that uh, baluchistan liberation army has been declared a global terrorist organization mm. and they virtually come to the defense of the baluchi people's struggle yeah which is all right okay many governments do that mm. and uh, many governments have also this uh, you know parallel line on the one hand they would condemn uh those that they that they dislike mm. and they will prop up or they support those that they like yeah. so this is no different but since this is linked to kashmir also and it's mm. taking place at a time when kashmir is in news and has been in news for so many years and government of india's position has now become that they take a position in favor of baluchistan publicly mm. this is what this mea statement means yeah it raises a i mean it obviously that if uh, uh, at the behest of government of india us declares hizbul mujahideen as global terrorist organization mm. you're fine with it but that behest of pakistan if the us declares baluchistan liberation army mm. to be a global terrorist organization you're not obviously the argument the government of india's hands its own hands are not clean mm. uh so before it speaks about pakistan it should also realize that it can that a lot of mud would also stick to its own yeah. uh, conduct and role in baluchistan but keep baluchistan out mm. the more serious part of it i mean these are diplomatic uh, uh positions probably government of india and pakistan Uh, to spite each other mm. but as we know you know in trying to spite each other at times you cut your own nose mm. in the bargain but that leave that aside for the time being what is more striking is that in 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 the last few years there have been uh, it's not just incremental changes major changes that are taking place in jammu and kashmir mm. look at it two years back in february 2017 there was a, a committee set up and which prepared a report and submitted it to the ministry of home affairs mm. which advocated an extremely um uh, how should i say repressive uh a kind of a shift yeah. in government of india's policy is not that it was not repressive earlier, earlier. Uh, but a far more a stepping up an escalation of its of of, of repression mm. in kashmir so they advocated the mosques and madrasas must be brought under the control of government of india mm. uh that uh, newspapers uh must be made to tow mm. uh, as part of perception management must be made to uh to the line of government of india and what they report how they report what kind of news is carried mm. and so in the, in the name of the uh, fair coverage fair coverage according to government of india means a favorable coverage for itself mm. uh anything which is critical is considered unfair coverage or anti national mm. they use even i mean from unfair to anti national the, the the language and the stridency in the language yeah. is shown a when change. an editor in chief was detained because yeah. they covered so then they they have been asked they in uh, they cracked down on two newspapers mm. greater kashmir and kashmir uh, and uh, narrator yeah uh, where the editors were called ostensibly to discuss to 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 uh, to be examined interrogated about terror fund so called terror funding mm. but 
E at the same time, they were also asked about a lot of articles that have appeared or the editorial policy. Uh, I mean, direct interference in, in what was being carried and mm. why it was being carried, etc., etc. These are s some of the things. Then the change, the crackdown in JNK Bank, the crackdown in administration, and a very remarkable thing that has happened in the last 30 years. It was the Jammu and Kashmir Police's crime branch, mm. which investigated all the crimes that took place, including all the so-called militancy-related crimes. In the last two years, now NIA seems to, National Investigative Agency yes. seems to be the flavor, uh, finds special flavor with, I mean, favor with this government. Mm. So now they are the ones who have uh, been uh, handed over most of these cases. Yeah. And in fact, they are out on a fishing expedition mm. in the name of terror funding, Hawala racket, uh, basically to strike against uh, income tax rates that are taking place, etc., etc., are basically meant to strike at, uh, on the one hand, the joint resistance leadership plus the others, you know, uh, activists or members of uh, uh, who are part of the movement in some way or who, uh, go according to the agencies and government, play a very important role. Mm. Uh, so, th those people are being targeted, as well as people from the pro-Indian side of the political formations mm. who are also coming under uh, attack and cases are being filed against them. If you take all these changes that are being introduced from attacking the pro-India party, attacking the, the separatists, uh, making no distinction between the indigenous and political mm. uh, uh, militancy espoused, say, by Hezbollah Mujahideen, yes. in contrast to uh, ISIS, Al-Qaeda kind of militancy, which doesn't talk about liberation of Kashmir or anything, but which believes in fighting for establishing the Islamic Caliphate. Mm. There is a big difference, but collapsing all of it in one, just because they are Kashmiri and that's just because political expression in one way or another, yeah. uh, uh, you know, is crit very sharply critical of government of India's role and things like that. Everybody is being targeted. Mm. Government of India refuses now to make any even the subtle distinctions that that exist between uh, these uh, groups. Uh, they refuse to take uh, take take note of it. Mm. For them. Uh, whether it is, uh, I mean, for them, Hezbul, they would like to characterize Hezbollah Mujahideen as being as bad as ISIS. When there's a world of difference between the two. And if we can't make that distinction, then it's a failure of our own understanding analysis and uh, nothing to be very proud of. Uh, because in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the days, in the years ahead or the months ahead that we have, uh, with things churning in Afghanistan, we will fa face some kind of impact mm. as a result of whatever settlement or agreement takes okay. place between the United States, uh, Russia, China, Pakistan with mm. Taliban. Mm. And it's, there is a fear which has been expressed by the ministers as well as by officials of government mm. of India that uh, the seven to eight thousand foreign militants who are in Afghanistan, uh, if there is an agreement and a settlement in Afghanistan, where are these foreign uh, militants going to go? Yeah. And the immediate, I mean, the, uh, b there is a strong likelihood yeah. that many of them, or at least some of them, will may make their way to India. So it, it's not even wise what they're planning to do. But the sum total of all these changes, yeah. Uh, handing over cr um, all the cases to NIA, which robs the crime branch of its own role, but at the same time sends a message that there is a great distrust, distrust of Jammu and Kashmir police, mm. and question mark about its uh, its uh, credibility and its yeah. competence okay. to handle these mm. cases. Uh, then that uh, the, the uh, changes in JNK Bank, uh, the administrative setup that you have. Uh, in Jammu and Kashmir mm. under uh, President's rule where most of the advisors, most of the key officers yeah. holding key positions in Jammu and Kashmir 
are uh, non kashmiris mm. uh, and on top of that non muslims yes. which sends a very clear message then to the to the population that they're being it's uh, it it strengthens their view that it is an alien rule that is being imposed on them and that's not conducive for any kind of peaceful mm. uh, let alone democratic for any kind of political resolution that the government of india of course government of india seems to believe that there are, there is no need for political resolution yeah. but we all know that sooner or later they'll have to end it and uh, you know take that seriously mm. and how is it possible to do it if you eliminate even the setup and the institutions the uh, uh, and the people who man them uh from uh, from i mean where you express a view which which is that you don't you distrust them and therefore they have to be replaced by those that you trust mm. who have to be brought from outside yes. that's not a very healthy message that we are sending across so taking it all together from what the governor has said yesterday to the changes that are i think it's it's a it's a uh, we are in on the cusp of um, of a major conflagration uh, uh, in jammu and kashmir rather than a resolution we may be hen- uh, heading towards uh, an uh, upscaling of of uh, militancy in a much more virul- virulent form than what we have you and i have experienced okay thank you gautam um we're going to be talking about this issue further but for now thank you for watching